Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Generation of Wrestling Podcast. As always, is yours truly the 28-year-old piece of gold, the franchise, aka the showstopper, better known as the G.O.W.'s resident tribal chief. And with me, he's not on the screen, but he will be. It's my tag team partner, my brother, my family. He is the flies in the room, Mr. One, Two, Three. Pin that ass down, Kid Breezy, aka King Two Code in the building. And of course, man, we got our special guest today. You may know him as D'Angelo De Niro, Elijah Burke, or simply the Pope. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the GOW. We got the Pope in the building. Pope, how you doing? What's up, man? It's a pleasure to be here taking part in the GOW podcast. And I got to tell you, Franchise, what a hell of a rap you got, boy. Hey, you know, I appreciate it. Well, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a student of the game, you know. So I figure if I'm going to come on here and do this right, you know, we got to make our guests feel special, man. So, you know, I, I definitely try to make sure it's worth everybody's time. That's what's up, man. Uh, you certainly uh, already, I can already tell before we even get started. You got that whole gift of gab thing. So this this right here should be a lot of fun. And hopefully your partner don't come on, come on here and weigh it down. He better be just as good as you are. Oh, nah, 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 man. Hey, look, you know, we, we, we make this thing happen. But, you know, this ain't <laughs> about me, man. It's all about the Pope. So, Pope, man, really quick, before we get started, how did you come up with the Pope gimmick? And the one thing I want to say that I noticed about you, man, listening to you speak, uh, the eloquence, your delivery, uh, even in your promos, I can tell, man, it, 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 it sounds very much like you were probably raised in the church at one point, man. Uh, am I correct in my assessment with that? Uh, uh, through and through. Uh, I mean, that's that's me to this uh, very day. Uh, that's my teaching. I uh, never forget where I come from. And yeah, man, um, you know, raised down in, in Jacksonville, Florida, in the South, as people like to refer to it as. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, uh, very much so a church boy, if that's what you want to call me. Well, speaking of church boy, man, I know one thing you are, and that is definitely a hell of a boxer. So what's this we hear, man? Over 100 wins in your career, 102 knockouts. Is that accurate? Accurate enough, that's for sure. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what your boy was doing um, when I embarked on a little bit of a boxing uh, run, I was in law enforcement at the time. I was still doing my thing. Um, and I, I had a knack or a need, I should say, for entertaining folk. And uh, there was a, a couple of events that were coming up called Guns and Hoses, which is something that is done continuously in Jacksonville to this very day and surrounding areas involving law enforcement and the fire departments. And, and it's all for charity. How about that? You know, it's all right. for charity. And I wanted to get in to, you know, I wanted to go out there and entertain. I wanted to be a part of it. And I, I went and I signed up for Tough Men and as a way to help condition me and prepare me for what I was about to embark on. And one thing led to another. It, it became my outlet. You know, uh, I've been reprimanded a time or two for having to put my hands on on some inmates or, you know, <laughs> because they try to attack me or whatever. Right, so it right. Was an outlet. And yeah, I, I was in the three years or so that I was doing it, I tried to get to that 100 mark. I, 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 I hit this streak. I was like, I was like Goldberg. I hit this streak. <laughs> and, and me being an avid wrestling fan, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get to 100. And so I had 99 fights. That is the actual record. And I lost one. Um, and, and and that was right at towards the end of me trying to get to 100. Well, Pope, before we continue forward, so uh, I want to just bring on, man, King Tuco in the building. King Tuco, man. Hey, look, the Pope, the Pope, he gave me my just do, man. He gave me my compliment. So I just want to let you know, man, don't, don't bring us down today. <laughs> uh, nah, man, nah. I'm, I'm, I'm just here to be a part along with the party, man. Uh, Mr. Pope, sir, uh, how you doing there, sir? What's up, Tuco? Um, I didn't know he was going to. It wasn't like you needed an introduction at this point. You came on here making all that noise after I talked about you, by the way. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, rightfully so, man. Trying to take care of personal things. It took a little longer than I thought, man, but I appreciate you, sir. It's all good. You and I both. Tuco, man, go ahead, man. Talk to the Pope. I, man, Pope, man, I, you know, I, I'm not sure what I missed out on, on man, but I just kind of wanted to know, man, you know, uh, law enforcement, man, you know, what 
was that something that you had a passion for? I mean, you might have been you already talked about it, but is that just something you had a passion for? And was it something you wanted to you see yourself doing a long term or did wrestling just spark something different for you? Uh, no, uh, uh, number one, you ain't missed much. So don't don't uh, worry about that. Uh, okay. We are here and, and, and we can go on here and do what we do, dog. But no, for sure, for sure. I, uh, my, my granddad was in law enforcement. My sister, she uh, was in law enforcement, retired as a sergeant uh, some couple of years back here after being there over 20 some years. Uh, your boy was just a, a, a troubled, somewhat youth. You know, I didn't even mm. have. I, I didn't even see myself graduating out of high school, uh, and oh. certainly there were there were folk and and my own family members who did not give me the benefit of a doubt of getting out of high school. But when I got out of high school, um, I followed them. You know, my sister said, "Why don't you go enroll in the police academy?" You know, and so that's kind of how it all started. I was like, you know what? That's a good idea because I didn't really have, you know, college wasn't on my mind per se, okay. and um, but. That's what happened. I rode in college, went to the police academy, um, got got myself together, man, and um, embarked on that career. I was one of the youngest guys. I was the youngest at the time to actually uh, be on the force, and and um, the rest is just kind of history. Wrestling, that just that, that's life, man. Uh, wrestling, mm -hmm. wrestling has been life. So that was be well before the police academy. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, even during my time on the force, when we talk about the uh, boxing, as Franchise was um, referencing to, I was going out there to entertain. I always wanted to entertain. Uh, I'm going out there putting on a show. I'm putting on a spectacle. Whether I was at Club 5 on Riverside in downtown Jacksonville or, you know, whether I was at Guns and Hoses, I'm going out there. I'm talking about making the interest. You know what I'm saying? You know <laughs> You know, when you're when you're when you're boxing and it's law enforcement versus the firefighters, you're supposed to go out there and you just got on their little tank top that represents them and, and you know and the colors with the shorts. Hell no, nah, not for Pope, man. I'm going out there. I got, <laughs> I got full attired robes. I got my, my my handlers carrying wrestling belts. I mean, this is what yeah, this is what I was doing because again, I wanted to entertain. Right. right, right, for sure, for sure. Go ahead, Fred. Well, well, speaking of entertain, you know, uh, we're gonna come back to this in you know, your early life, but you, you you brought something up. You said you always want to be an entertainer. So, how did it feel, man? Vince man, World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. We're gonna talk about OVW and all that in a second, but how did it feel for him to come out on TV and to label you the face, the new face of the new ECW when they rebranded it? Well, I don't know how the hell it felt for him. He was very uh, excited and pumped. I'll tell you how I felt. What's the, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Um, because I literally did not find out about that moment until a couple of hours before the show. Again, you got to wow. remember, I was, I was brought up to be the mouthpiece for Sylvester Turkai. We were on a trajectory mm -hmm. to go to WrestleMania to have Turkai versus The Undertaker at Ford Field. That was the plan. So things kind of started shifting and they started putting the attention on me. And then we get moved over to the ECW brand from the SmackDown brand. And all yeah. of a sudden I show up and, and, and after the catering and the writers meeting and all that other stuff, I say, hey, Pope, you, you got a suit with you? No. Why do I need a suit? You need a suit. Why? What's going on? Uh, you're going to be in the ring with Vince tonight. Hold huh. on. So that's kind of how it worked out, and I believe we were in Texas at the time, and um, I had to. I went and got a draw from um, uh, here, here. Here's a little history lesson. I want to see where you guys are at. Who was Rick Martel's partner when he was the WWF Tag Team Champion? Uh, uh, Y'all uh, on the spot. Oh, uh, yeah, you you sure yeah. the hell did, hey, dude. You know, we usually the ones putting people on the spot. <laughs> yeah, you oh, sure did. You did put me on the spot because I should know this name. I, okay, uh, yeah. anyways, it's Tony Guerrilla, all right? Okay. So so Tony Guerrilla, uh, he's handling the, the draws. And back then, you can get a draw uh, when you showed up to the show. A draw is basically an allowance. And mm -hmm. uh, I didn't go get a draw because, well, hell, they were going to pay for it. I, I literally went to three different stores. As a matter of fact, I, I, I'm i going to do you boys a solid once we get done, if you remind me. That oh, outfit, okay. that suit, 
that I wore that day, it came from three different stores. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm out here, you go, I'm trying to find a mall and you ain't going, you know, I'm in Texas, but I'm also at a wrestling event and I'm trying to figure out where to go to shop. They don't know where our, our type of malls are. You right, know, right. I go to the hood and get you was know, <laughs> <laughs> probably 20 miles away. <laughs> it yeah, so, took you all out the way. Yeah, so I went I went to again, I, I, we found the biggest mall there, which is the more elaborate one and the high expensive stuff. And I went to three different stores. I put that suit together right then and there, got the shoes right then and there. So when I walked out there on uh ECW with Vince McMahon. Everything that you saw, the shoes, the pants, the shirt, and the jacket came from three different places, <laughs> and it was thick and brand new. Yeah, so, oh, no. so it was a thrill for me, uh, just to answer your question. To I was shocked. I was surprised. I, I didn't know that it was part of the plan. I found out then. Mm, too cold. All right, man. So I was you're, cold, wasn't I? I, hey, you, yeah, was. you were. You were. Yeah, yeah. You 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 hey, was cold. You was. Hey, you, you, you you did the damn thing. Mac a photo op moment in the ring. I thought that was kind of cool too, man. I'm like, look at Paul. So check this out though. <laughs> Before the old King takes over here, I, I like King better. I don't like that too. I'm gonna call you King, bro. They, they, I appreciate you. Uh, they they got they got their King and Jerry the King Lawler right here. G O W. We got our King. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cold, by the way, but here we go. So. <laughs> So I'm out there in the ring. One thing you don't do, and I think um, on television, especially if you're not told to, I guess you guys probably saw that with Titus O'Neil, you do not touch the chairman. You do not yeah. touch uh, Vince McMahon yeah. if you're not told. And um, I've always been uh, someone that goes with the moment. I'm an ad liver. I'm a one, I just, I go with what I feel. That's the way I was taught. Um, mm -hmm. And when I'm out there in the ring, uh, you know, I was working hand in hand with, with my mentor, Dusty Rose. So I was never really, uh, quote unquote, uh, scripted. So when I'm out there talking, I'm kind of talking. I know kind of where I'm supposed to be. But that moment was there. That was not a planned moment. I just took my arm and put it around Vince because he's always telling me, when you walk through the curtain, give, give him that million dollar smile. Let him, let him have that smile. And so, <laughs> so um, I, I figured it would be a great moment, and I, I, I figured he'd, you know, he'd like it. And, and sure enough, he, I, what, what is he going to do? He's endorsing me. So I went with it. When we got backstage, though, it was, um, uh, yeah. did anybody instruct you to do that? I'm like, uh, no, sir. He was like, good stuff, good effing stuff. But do <laughs> anything you're not instructed to. But um, yeah, but he loved it. I loved it. And then the next week, it was part of the opening. And they did the whole camera stills and sounds with me and him mm. from different angles. And um, I, I think in that moment, I really won him over. Mm. Okay. I, Vince McMahon, tell the people something about him that maybe folks don't understand when you have a guy that's a conglomerate that he is in this business. He's He's created this, he's made more of this wrestling world than what it could ever be. Uh, what I think anybody could ever really ever imagine the height, the levels that has reached. What is it like working with him and being able to try to get ideas with him and, and get an understanding of what it is that you see and then understanding what it is he sees about you? Well, Vince sees one thing and he looks for one thing and that's mm -hmm. money. Okay. That's money, not necessarily potential. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks for money that is untapped. It's like, okay, it's right there. Right here is the gold that I need to... I'm going to dig right here for this oil. I know it's there. Mm -hmm. I'm not searching for it because Vince has an eye for talent. He has an eye for uh, what's going to give him the best possible... Uh, path to success with whatever it is he's trying to do. And that's right. what Vince has always done. Um, he sees it. He knows it's there. That's where he drills for oil. That's where he dig for the gold. Uh, that's where he chip away at the mountain for the diamonds. That's always been Vince McMahon. And um, he's, he does that to this very day. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, you're the face of the new ECW. Uh, obviously, it got a lot of backlash because, you know, it wasn't what people knew it to be. And people were hoping, OK, well, it's ECW. Maybe they'll keep it to the level of violence or, you know, chaos that they would normally do. But obviously, by this time, it's, you know, they're on cable TV. The, uh, the feel of the place is changing. That level of violence really isn't something that Vince wants to do a lot. So how was it for you being one of the, the faces, being part of the new breed and trying to get that over? Like, what was what was the positives and what was the negatives of that? Well, I think you pointed out the negatives. And I think people mm -hmm. have a, uh, people are misinformed about what Vince necessarily wanted and what he didn't want. You have right. to remember this deal was struck with the sister network of the USA and therefore because uh, ECW was going to be on sci-fi. I mean, hell, go back to the Raws uh, yeah. during, the, during the era of the Monday Night Wars. It was extreme. They borrowed half of their stuff from ECW. They took right. storylines from ECW. They tried yeah. to replicate action from ECW. So Vince didn't have a problem doing that, in my opinion, but he was on the sci-fi network, and part of the deal was to cater to the sci-fi audience. To, to oh, cater, it wasn't necessarily to cater to the wrestling. Wrestling was going to be the backdrop for the stupidity that was sci-fi. Yeah. So, ah, <laughs> okay, there. okay. So therefore, that's why you got the zombie and and and, and, and the <laughs> vampires. You know, that's what all of that was about. So it, it was, wrestling was just just on the marquee, I should say, and um, the ridiculousness of sci-fi had to be inter. Uh, weaved into the product. Uh, so that was probably the negative, uh, but the positive was exactly um, what you're looking at today. Uh, certainly uh, from my perspective, I'm sure from uh, CM Punk's perspective as well, and and Morrison and some of the other guys, Miz, it was, it was, the, um, it was the trampoline of sorts that catapulted us into the world of professional wrestling stardom. So, so, so that's what it did. It gave us an opportunity to shine and, and, and not be uh, outshined per se. I don't want to say outshine, but uh, when you got stars like The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels and Edge and Ric Flair, Kane, and the list goes on, um, how, do, how do these youngsters get a chance to shine lest they have their own, you know, their own place to do so? Because uh, right. when you're tuning in to Raw and SmackDown, you're tuning in to see Triple H and Shawn Michaels and DX and RK, uh, o, what, uh, rated RK. Rated RKO. Yeah, and the list yeah. goes on. You, 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 you know, you're looking for those guys. So it's kind of harder for guys like myself at the time to actually break out and shine. So that, that was the positive of ECW. Okay. I got a question. So, so you know, we're talking about ECW. We're talking about you uh, being proclaimed as the new face of ECW. You mentioned stars like The Miz and Morrison, who to this day are still wrestling, uh, which goes to show the longevity you guys have had and the careers you guys have had up until this point. But let's take it back to OVW, right? And then when you got called up to the quote-unquote main roster, you know, SmackDown, then you said transition to ECW. Back then, you know, was there a, a huge culture shock? And what was like the – the, the biggest differences you noticed in terms of being an OVW talent and then, of course, getting that first main roster call up? No, th there there was never a culture shock of sorts because uh, it OVW was basically a mirrored uh, flea market example, <laughs> if you want to go that route. <laughs> right. uh, and, and I say that respectfully. Absolutely. Uh, maybe not the, the, the right choice of words, but it was – you know, you got your, you got your, uh, you got your colleges like you know, your Alabama and all those accredited colleges, right? Uh, uh, Clemson and Florida State and University of Florida, but then you have those colleges that are not even recognized. They're on the, they're on the bottom tier. Well, that's what OVW sort of was. It was a training and developmental system for W. Uh, we and what it did at that time though was prepared us for the road uh, we were traveling to and fro we had three-day weekends where we we would drive an hour or two hours away and go wrestle at a community center or at a church gym or 
whatever the case may be, in front of paying talent. And that got a, that got us a, accustomed somewhat to what lied ahead. You know, we had our own television product. We learned how to work to the hard camera. We learned how to work to the fans. We learned how to be under the bright spotlight. And the list goes on and on. And and, and so transitioning, uh, shout out to Gabby Tough. Transitioning. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> Y'all won't get that, but that's part of my podcast thing. I say every time I use the word transition, give a shout out to Gabby Tough, the former Tyler Rex. But um, sure. but going on to the um, to the main roster, there was no better preparation uh, for anyone to do so, but by being a part of OVW. Now we got OVW. Now we got NXT. Uh, looking at NXT or two point oh now, but looking at what Triple H has done with NXT. And, and and WWE now, and then looking at OVW. Then, do you see any similarities? Or if say you were a, a promoter today, right? Or say you had your own company, which style? And I, and, and I guess it's kind of a double ended question. But would you prefer the the OVW way of doing things, or do you think you know they're on to something with this new NXT? Because when it was a black and gold brand, everybody kind of felt like, okay, you know what? When when WWE was getting stale. NXT kind of had that hardcore wrestling. It's like you said with sci-fi, right? It had that hardcore wrestling with kind of like a little bit of that mainstream polish, but it, it had a different feel. Now everything kind of feels the same when it comes to WWE. Uh, do you think that is done necessarily on purpose by design or is this a sign of the time changing? Well, you, you, you threw about four, five different questions at me, so I'll try to get to that and break it down. Um, one is OVW and NXT, certainly the black and gold. Even now, when you talk talk about just the, the mechanics of the product uh, behind the scenes, not the television presentation, but what they're doing and what Triple H has done with it, it is, it is basically uh, the prototype of what OVW was. It is OVW at its core. What Triple H did was, was was took the money that they weren't willing to put in OVW because it wasn't owned by them. It was contracted by them. You know, OVW know. was Danny Davis's and Jim Cornette's baby. So it was they, they, they contracted OVW as their uh, official developmental company. They didn't own it. So what they did and they were trying to do when they created Deep South, same thing. They, they did not get what they wanted until they got down to Orlando, Florida, got the building, and now we're going to do the same exact thing, except we're going to give it a massive upgrade. We got uh -huh. this huge facility. We're going to dump all this money into it. And, um, and, 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 and gosh, they've done a great job with that in Triple H uh, and, and Vince and all the visionaries behind it. Uh, you know, when they say bigger, better, stronger, well, that's basically what it is. It's like OVW um, on steroids. And, and, you know, it just took it and made it something gigantic to what it is today. When you talk about the product, Black and Gold versus NXT 2.0, the product of Black and Gold, uh, it was really more similar to OVW with the right. darkness, the grittiness, the way that the, the wrestling – uh, was more likened to something that we were accustomed to when we grew up on versus um, more of the flash and, and 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 sizzle that we're seeing right now with NXC 2.0. But to their credit, what NXC 2.0 is, is literally almost a carbon copy on a smaller scale of what the WWE is doing on the bigger scale with Raw and SmackDown and all the other stuff. So uh, for, for that, I I find no fault because it will be, as you mentioned earlier, an easier transition and not a culture shock once they leave from NXT 2.0. It's just an easy transition onto the main roster, other than the fact that they take the individuals off of 2.0 and bring them over to whatever the brand and, 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 and give them a complete makeover. Hey, guys. Both of these products are on the same station. It's called USA Network. You've invested all this money. You invested all this money and time in developing Mr. Franchise here, and you bring Franchise to the main roster, and we're going to give them a complete makeover. 
And yeah. it's, you know, a complete makeover. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so let's, let, 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 let me bring let's that talk. up. So Pete, let's Pete talk. Dunn, Walter, all these guys that are, are that, that have made such a hell of a name, especially Walter. This dude held a title for 800 and damn near 90 something days. I think 890 some days. Like, how do you, I, I don't know, what, 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 what do you think the mindset or the thinking was of why, why the name Walter doesn't work? What's wrong with Pete Dunn that you bring him up and all of a sudden now he's called Butch? We've been knowing this guy as Pete Dunn. They've been dominating. They've been winning. They, they've done so many great things as this Pete Dunn. But I, I don't know, what, what's the Pope's opinion on the name changes and, and why do they think they work? But I, I think I just kind of alluded to that. I think well, it's, yeah, you 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 did, but I think it's dumb. Uh, it, it's 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 silly, and someone um, or some folk are out of touch. It's just I think it has more so to do with the fact that it's customary. It's something that they've yeah. always, for the most part, done. And yeah. when they go to the main roster, it's almost like we have to re-Christian you. This is a good thing because now you're being upgraded. And I think that's mm-hmm. that's the mindset of those in charge. You're being upgraded. But I don't get it. I don't know why. Maybe there's something uh, because, because of the – I do know for a fact because even though NXT is on a national television network along with their other product, mm-hmm. uh, it's not seen by as many people, but yet the WWE Universe is very much well aware, especially with social media, of whom these folk are. And it's much so, you have these guys, you bring them up, but before they even got up, you've already made action figures of them in their name on NXT. So it's like, what the hell? (laughs) Maybe there's a purpose. Maybe maybe they're... um, Maybe bringing Pete Dunn in and putting him with... um, uh, Seamus and and the other guy, uh, uh, Rich Allen, bringing them in as Pete Dunn. Maybe that didn't fit in their mind. For me, Pete Dunn just fits. It's still a, a crazy sounding name that will fit right in there with Seamus. But maybe uh, we all know Vince. If you don't know, he likes the one names, you know, yes. Butch and Butch. <laughs> Butch for this purpose, maybe not for Pete Dunn, but if it was a bigger guy, Butch really fits. Uh, and, and you know, in the scheme of things, with the whole Irish Trinity of sorts. Right, right. Okay, Pope man, I, I wanna, I wanna talk uh, at your life after WWE. Uh, you know, going to WWC, going to uh, TNA. What was it like for the Pope to be going to the Indies as this name, as this guy that has made this name in WWE, and clearly has talent, clearly is very entertaining. Uh, what was that? For? like for you what was your mindset moving forward uh very uh it was it was cool because um i had never done the indies so so you know i mean i was i was a product of of the wwe system i came straight to ovw and straight up to the roster mm-hmm. and to to go into uncharted waters you know that's always exciting you know it's, it's exciting and and uh, your freedom that's there to do and be what you can be and do what you want to do. All of that stuff was was exciting times. So um, um, obviously the, the transition from that, um, you know, no, nobody wants to, to leave and, and, and then say, okay, mm-hmm. how am I going to do this? It was new to me. So that was reservations, you know, because now I'm dealing with promoters uh, straight up. You know, I'm dealing with – I'm not getting these – "Quote unquote paycheck in my mailbox every you know week or two. Now it's well, shoot. I, I'm dealing with these people straight up, and I've heard the horror stories about promoters and who yeah. can you trust and this, that, and the other. And then I don't want these guys because I come come in and do a show for them. You know, I need them to understand like this is business. I'm not your friend. I'm not one of those type of guys that's going to appease you." to try to make you think that, oh, yeah, we're cool, we're boys, and you want to come pick me up in your hoop, and then and then <laughs> charted, charted me around to your friends and your family. Like, yeah, man, he's yeah, he's with me and whatnot. Nah, nah, I don't dig that type of stuff. Right, you know? right. Yeah, but um, it was it was fun. It was a fun, fun ordeal. All right, man, my partner, he alluded to it, so I'm going to kind of bring it up. 
We all know, man, charismatic entertainment at this point. Like you said, you already kind of got that that notoriety for being in WWE. TNA, right? D'Angelo De Niro. How did you come hmm. up with the name? Hmm. Well, the name of the name. Okay, so before I left the WWE, we, I um I, I'm doing this uh blog on WWE.com. You can go over there right now and just type in, uh, you know, the Elijah experience or whatever. Yeah, you, know. you go to WWE.com, type that in, and you'll see all of the, the blogs that I did. And uh, I will write that stuff myself. And, um, you know, they were going right. to do it. They wanted me to contribute, and they were going to have somebody from WWE.com to do all of that. And it's like, no, I, I handle it. They're like, okay, right. um, do, do you do you want to set up an email? No, nah, I put my email at the bottom. I mean, if I'm gonna do it, I want to be, I want it to be me. And so I would do my time, take my time. I would write these blogs, just to entertain the fans. And then when I got all the emails, I would actually read those emails and respond to the people. And so much like now, I, I'm I'm trying to become familiar with TikTok. Not too big on it, um, but I've followed. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad at all. <laughs> I, I followed a couple. I, I follow some people back because I'm just trying to build it up. And um, what do you know? When somebody realized you followed them back, now that oh my gosh, you don't believe you will never believe who followed me. I right. I, I cut on my TikTok and the Pope, and I, you know so. And the list goes yeah, on. Yeah. So I, I, I got plenty of those, but that's what was happening, you know, uh, uh, 15 years ago, 16, 17 years ago, uh, however long it was ago, when I was doing the uh, uh, blog on WWE.com, I actually responded to people's emails. And when they found out it was me, they were blown away. And then they continued to write. And some people will send me their problems. Some people will ask me for marital advice because I would refer to myself as the, the, the host of hosts or the God in light or the paragon of virtue. So mm -hmm. they, 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 they will send me this stuff. So after, um, after my run with Turkai and, and I'm going back over to SmackDown now, it seems, I'm, I'm, I want to work on a new character. I understand the WWE, you got to constantly be, you know, uh, uh, reimagining yourself. And right. so it's like, I, I follow these people. I would refer to all of y'all as my congregation. I was doing that live on the microphone, mm -hmm. my congregation. And I thought to myself, if they are my congregation, what would I, what does that make me? Who can, what can I be? And I said, I don't want to be a reverend. We all already had that. Devon Slick. Don't want to be a deacon. That's, that's blah. But they had Deacon Batista, uh -huh. you know. So I'm thinking, what can I be? And I, what has there never been? There's never the been a pope. pope. Not the Pope. There's never been a black pope. Black Pope. A black Pope. You right about that? And so, Not so therefore, that's how I came up with the black pope, and that we were going to run with that in WWE, uh, except for the fact that they didn't see my vision. They wanted me to go out there and be Hellfire and Brimstone. Obviously, they never watched uh, Boondocks, and that's the problem yeah. with, 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 you know, um, uh, middle-aged white men sitting around the table trying to figure out, uh, a, you know, yeah. Yeah. A, a character for a black guy. And I'm going to talk about Russo in a second. But yeah, it, the whole thing was derived from a, a, a film called Slickback. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. That was, oh, I yes, watched. Sir. I watched the Boondocks many so, times over. So I was simply going to be called a, 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 a pope, black pope, but I was just a pimp called black pope. That's all I was going to be. I didn't uh, want to be out there preaching. I, I don't believe in mixing all that. If people wanted to go to church, they go to church. They didn't come to wrestling to to hear all of that. They want to be entertained, you know? So, yeah. So, but my first few uh, was going to be Kane at SummerSlam. And I was finally going to get my Pope Mobile that I was asking for over and over and over. You know, like, I want to make sure I got that if we were going to do it. And Kane was going to come out, set it on fire, push me over, all that good stuff. So. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except when they started having me probably wanted me to come. They were going to do the tell. I was doing the televangelist thing uh, in some pre tapes and stuff where I got the little mic piece on and all of that. It's like, you know, I don't look, man, I don't mind doing the whole 
brother love ish type thing. But look, man, we're we're it's two thousand and eight. Come on now, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I get the I get to um, TNA after meeting with Jeff Jarrett. We were at on a convention together, and uh, we talk on the elevator. And I go down to TNA once my ninety days is up or something like that. And um, I, I do this match and with Sean Spears. And Jim Cornette is there, and everybody's like, okay, great. Uh, you own your name, right? Yes, they want me to be Elijah Burke. I have this disc in my bag of how I wanted Pope to be. Uh -huh. I did this whole thing at OVW in a closed arena, me and some of the guys. And if you look at the way Evil Uno will come to the ring and they will have all those people form chairs and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, whom somebody was a part, had to be a part of when I did that with the initial concept of Pope because there's no way that the same thing that I did in that video was being done by Evil Uno all these years later. But nonetheless, uh, moving along, moving right along, I get there. I'm going to be Elijah Burke. Impact loves to use certainly TNA at the time. If you're coming from WWE, you're already branded. Let's just take it. Let's run with it. That makes the most sense. You right. got, you, got a, you already got a, a credit to your your brand. Uh -huh. I take that this because I saw uh, at my bag. I'm going to try to find Russo. It just so happened Russo is coming out of the building, soundstage, heading into the uh, office. And I mm -hmm. saw Vince. I said, Vince, I said, you got a second? Yeah, 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 man, what's up? I said, could you take this? I said, it's four minutes. It's four minutes long. Could you take this? Go watch it. This is, just just watch it for me. He said, okay, no problem. And he, he took it. He went into the office immediately. And five minutes later, he came power walking back out. Bro, bro, forget Elijah Burke, bro. You have to be the Pope, man. You you got to be the Pope, man. You know why, bro? Because the Pope is money, bro. The Pope is money, and I already <laughs> have the name, man. De Niro, D'Angelo De Niro, because that is money. I'm going to tell him right now, forget Elijah Burke. You're the Pope, bro. And that's it. And that's how I <laughs> Hey, I like it. I like it. Well, hey, look. First, before you, before you no go, man. First and foremost, your your Vince, your Vince McMahon and Russo is. I, I I love your energy, man. You 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 could definitely do them, man. I I'm loving it. Yeah, and, and again, to his Vince Russo came up again. De Niro means money, and that's right. why he was stressing. So he came up, and again, kudos to him. To go, okay, I got De Niro, but what's a cool black name and what's in touch with the black audience? Well, D'Angelo. D'Angelo was still on the top of his game right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like D'Angelo De Niro. So that was a Vince Russo creation, D'Angelo De, De Niro. The Pope, obviously, well, that's I own that. That's mine. Right. I, hey, man, I, go ahead, bro. I, <laughs> it blew my head with that one. Yeah. Oh, I want to. I, I want to talk to you about kind of kind of a serious topic uh, as far as you know, uh, black wrestlers, right? Uh, this is a conversation that me and uh, you know Kane Tuko here we have pretty frequently, uh, and that is historically on the mainstream level the booking of black wrestlers, right? Especially when it comes to like the world title picture and things of that nature. Uh, for you, do you feel like, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I know this answer, but you know, just, you know, bear with me here. Do you feel like there is a certain ceiling on black wrestlers? I mean, you start to see more representation now, of course, yes. But do you feel like there was kind of, even if it wasn't intentional, that subconscious, you know, uh, holding back and holding down the black talent? Well, give, give give me a more direct question. Okay. My man, do you feel like professional wrestling, up until recently where it became cool, they didn't want to have the quote-unquote black superstars on top of their company, black faces of the company? There you go. See, when, when, you, when you're doing these interviews, you got to be you got to be 10 words or less and straight to the point. Um, All right. And I, and I understand you're trying to be very uh, professional. You don't want to cross no boundaries in your questioning. So I get that. But uh, 
No, man, you just you, you ask the hard questions when you got to ask them, and then we we, we deal with it. For sure, but, absolutely. But but to to answer your question, uh, wrestling has always been a white man sport. Period. Mm -hmm. Blacks have been mingled in, but it's never really been. Uh, I mean, I mean, good good grief. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Um, I don't think. And, and not just wrestling, but I don't think any mainstream anything was designed looking at the history of America for blacks to su succeed. I mean, that's just fact. We're still in the, we're still in the evolution process. We're still evolving across. All, go 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 back. Uh, you know, NFL celebrated what 100 years, or then I had what. Uh, almost 60 Super Bowls now. Um, but you don't remember black quarterbacks back then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so uh, it, one or one or few uh, Doug Williams. That's about that's a, <laughs> you know, so, that's about so it. That's the way that I mean that was the nature of the game. Go back and watch NBA 75 years. You don't, you know, back in the early goings of it. You know, there wasn't a lot of blacks in anything that was prominently uh, featured. So when it comes to wrestling, it, it was kind of the same thing, per se. Um, I think with, with the way that the world has gone, the world has changed, mm -hmm. uh, and we continue to change, that having black athletes uh, in sports entertainment on wrestling period, that is one thing. Great. I mean, I mean, I'm all for it. That's good. But don't pacify me with that. Give, give, give me, give me someone that looks like me that is not just a champion, but it's the face of your company. Then right. you got me. Uh -huh. Then you got me. I, I've been very, I've been very vocal on Post Point of View podcast with Elijah Burke. Wherever y'all listen to your podcast, you can you can join me on. But I've been very vocal about it. I, I, I enjoyed them pacifying us with Kofi. That was that that was a ground root effort from the fans that mm -hmm. Kofi wouldn't have gotten if I, uh, Ali had got injured because of what right. the spot was for Ali. Kofi got there because of the fans, so they could not ignore the fans, especially during the era of Black Lives Matter and all of that was going on. So what is the smart move for Vince McMahon? Kofi's my boy. Like, that's my boy. He was my boy, my traveling partner, my roommate, everything, okay, before I left. And uh, we're still very close to this very day. But ask yourself, what would have happened um, if Ali had, had a, not got injured? Would Kofi had ever got that chance? I, I don't see it. No. And then, and then not only would he have not gotten a chance, but because he... Uh, he did get the chance. Well, did they ever present him as that guy, the guy? No, no, no. not at all. No, at all. and no. you know, we, we kind of said the same thing about Big E, you know, when same Big thing. E wanted same thing, you know, yeah, we, we, we said the same thing with Big E, you know, we feel like when Big E won, okay, Big E's a big guy, right? Big E's a charismatic guy, Big E's a guy that could be mean when he needs to be, be silly when he needs to be, but again, it, it, it's you know, when you look at the way. You know, these title reigns have ended. You can even go back to, you know, Bianca Belair. And it seems like, you know, they're going to right their wrong with that. You know, that could be all just, you know, one big plan. But when you look at how our champions have been getting treated, it's almost like they dangle the carrot in front of you, right? It's like, okay, all right, we're going to give it to you, but then we're going to take it away from you. and Because we don't know what to do with it. That's the problem. They don't exactly. know what to do with and, it. And, and, and it goes back to what you said earlier, Pope, when you said, you know, when it comes to, you know, middle-aged white men trying to book black talent and not just black talent because we've had the same conversation about you know the hispanic stars and the asian stars as well but for us being black we're obviously you know more aware of the black talent of well, how they're being booked they'll you know have, they'll certainly have a better idea with with, with hispanics and, and latinos versus blacks that's for sure because they're probably more aware of their culture than they are that of blacks and it's not just you know I, I said middle-aged white men or whatnot because I was alluding to Russo as I was going to go into that story because now they do have a couple of black writers up there and, yeah. and, and half of them don't 
uh, apparently seem to be a part of their very own culture. And if they are, they're in the minority. Huh, look at that double pun. Right. <laughs> right. So, so it's, it's like, can, can, can we really suggest this idea that's going to fly, that's going to be accepted or whatnot? Here, let me give you about that middle age uh, thing uh, with Russo. Russo will come around at Impact, okay? And he will go, or TNA at the time, but he will go, um, okay, I'm waiting for the Duma, the Duma interview. And I mean, we're live on pay-per-view at this one at Genesis. Mm-hmm. And we're waiting on him. Like, okay, we got to get ready to film this, this pre-tape. And it's like, he comes around the corner. Okay, Pope. All right, Popey. What we got, Popey? And I'm like, what do you mean what we got? Come on, I mean, you're the, you're, you're, you're the Pope. You know, there's my baby. Like, <laughs> so he's, he's like, you know, do you? You're the Pope. I'm like, okay, Vince, I get that. But tell me what am I talking about so I can be Pope. Right. And the reason I'm sharing that with you, and I like to give Vince Russo credit because so many people give him, you know, so much crap. Mm-hmm. Vince Russo t- says to me, look, bro, I can't write for you, bro. I'm a 40-year-old Italian. How can a 40-year-old Italian from New York, bro, write for you? You're the Pope, bro. Vince mm. Russo never tried to script Pope. And he got it. He understood that. That's that's what I was alluding to earlier. And mm. that's the issue with the product today. Uh, you look at Bobby Lashley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he goes out there, and he's cutting this promo. He looks like a menacing monster, mm-hmm. and yet he's saying the words out of his mouth that doesn't even correlate with me, and I'm as black as they get. Right, right. He right. says stuff, and I'm going, okay, like why are they even writing this for him? And, and, it's, and, and it's because they feel this is what, and then he comes across so educated and so proper. And are we educated? Yes, I get that. But when we get mad, we are not using these highly intelligent words when we're upset. I'm talking about, you know, our culture here. Right, mm-hmm. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, don't, I, I, I mean, when's the last time you heard Bobby say, bruh? Out of his mouth. <laughs> Man, I would love to. I would love to hear that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like so, so 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 that's probably, you know, that's a greater issue right there. Then you look at Big E, you know, my guy, I just talked to him yesterday. Same thing. I want to get behind, I want him to be, but at the same time, it's like, oh, we're gonna make Big E serious. But then when we get Big E as the champion. We probably got a moment or two. He never gets the main event. He's never the guy, never closes out the show. And they go back to the ridiculousness of, of it, and, and what I like to refer to as that, that sideshow attraction that some have always seen us to be. And, and that's the thing that I hated about what they did with Big E because I felt, okay, you took him from the New Day by putting him on the other show. Okay, that was step one. You want to build him away from you want to show him in a different light change his outfit change his color scheme change the way he acts he still was big e from new day without the new day to me like and 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 and, and the way he dressed it still looked at new day i yeah you changed his music that was cool but it was just too colorful it it was just and i'm like man if they'd have changed his attitude a little bit not so jokey a little more serious but you know he he's big e he's charismatic so, you well, know, he can make a phony moment when he needs to. I think the the, the deal with, and, and let's be, let's be uh, fair to, to this and, and let me be clear. The whole thing was, when it comes to them, that's what got them to the dance. So, right, yeah. I, I you know, it may not be what we wanted for for Big E, for Kofi not, and, and Xavier Woods, which, you know, him being the king and all of that. Uh, I, I think the Big E thing was a reward to Big E. You know, Big E's well-liked. Uh, right. you know, and, and he's been very dependable and shout out to Big E and, and hopefully he gets well soon and, and is able to return to the ring. But, um, you know, he was rewarded for, for him being who he is. And um, but at the same time, he doesn't get rewarded or, or even be considered in that position, if not for the New Day. 
So I, I, I get that. They're, they didn't want to necessarily break away from it completely because they wanted to have something to go back to if need be. And you see where they are now, back to the new day. And and that and that and that is very true. And I think that was the thing because I felt I, I understood you didn't want to go too far with it, but here was an opportunity to build a new star, mm -hmm. something that you obviously need to do in this company when you've let go of so many people who some were stars and some were, you know, just kind of there. But you let go of so many people. You're you're bringing back folks that are past their prime. And here's a guy that one people like, they know how good he is in the ring. They know he can work the microphone. They know he he's entertaining. He's everything you want. And he almost, he's damn near a Vince uh, kind of guy, big, muscular, he can move. I, so it's like, he's almost a perfect package. Why wasn't the effort there to really push him a little more? And I, and I think that's what kind of uh, got to some people because well, you just kind of, Thank you for thank you for that long drawn out uh, segue right there. It gave me time to throw my shirt on and put some clothes on because you're probably sitting over here free balling. But I'm, uh, I'm good to go now. So plus I can communicate and wrap you up. But uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it, folks. You know, I just, hey, I just, you know, we got into the conversation. You know, hey, I feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, and, and as you should be. But uh, again, not just not just the opportunity to build uh, another main event talent, but a black talent. Okay, because right. that's what we're talking about. So when you talk about uh, Big E, here's what should have happened, regardless of. Cause, see, you got to remember, New Day. They're selling. They're selling merchandise, man. They've always yeah, been. Yeah. You know, so they don't want to lose that. But what should have happened right then and there was the switch. They should have yeah. took Big E and made him heel. They go, well, you we got Bobby Lashley. You already got a big black heel. That would have been the time to lighten Bobby Lashley. Maybe have him go into the, the tweeter department or just simply take Big E and make him a heel as they did and put him on the other brand. But then they're worried yeah. about this. Where is he going to fit? You know, you got Roman Reigns over on SmackDown. You know, you got last year. So it's like, where is he going to fit? I would have just done a complete switch right there. They can always get back to the New Day. They can always have the New Day talk some sense back into them, win them back over, have that, you know, we want our brother back love, and and, and he's back in the mix. But um, I, I, I just want to – I want – and I know they don't necessarily go with that today because the brand is bigger than anybody. Right. Listen, yes, WrestleMania is selling – whether Stone Cold's on it or not. WrestleMania, right, yeah. yeah, I mean, it may not be 100,000, but that's why they're bringing Stone Cold to make sure. <laughs> you know? so, right. So, so the pay-per-view sell regardless because the brand is big. Back back in the day, they need, you know, Hogan had to be on it for it to sell. The Rock, Stone Cold had to be on it for it to sell, you know, and John Cena, and the list goes on. Now, it's just the brand. So um, I, I still want to see Somebody that looks like you and me, not necessarily right. look like The Rock. No, no, shout out to The Rock. But no, we here, no, we here with you. We get you. Okay, that looks like yeah. me. That is yeah. the face of the company. That guy. Until we get that, I'll never be satisfied. The closest we got to that, but he was still second tier, was King Booker. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's yeah. the closest we've ever gotten to it. Yeah, I mean, Mark Henry. No, I said face. Oh, the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. That's true. Because nice. yeah, so shout out to Booker T. Booker T's the man. And when yeah, he yeah. went into that King Booker, he yeah. he he wasn't given the title. And I'll talk to y'all a little bit later. He wasn't given the title uh uh based off of circumstances or lawsuits and all this other stuff. He was given it because his character was freaking over. You get the title yeah. for three reasons. You get the you get the title, and y'all remember this because I'm in teaching mode right now. Yeah. Three reasons a person get a title. One, because they're over. Two, to get them over. Or three, to get the title over. That's why the oh. belt went back to Ric Flair so many times. When it lost oh. his... When it, when it began to lose his luster... They put right. it back on Flair. Nature. And nature. now it, nature becomes, boy. it becomes important again. Booker T got the title because he was freaking over. And he was the top heel, and there was no heel that was better than Booker. 
Yeah, that, that that King Booker gimmick was insanely over. But Pope, I know me and King you we Booker. talked before we started. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you got another appearance to get ready for. So we definitely sure. want to be respectful of your time because you already kind of you know went over a little bit already. So with that being said, man, before we get out of here, Pope, social medias, where can they find you? Tell them about your charity really quick. Plug yourself, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want to find your boy, you can do so. <laughs> I'm laughing because now I can see myself. <laughs> if you, <laughs> just, oh, you see the pictures? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to find your boy, do so over on Instagram at the Black Pope. That's D A Black Pope, as well as on Twitter at the Black Pope. You can follow me on YouTube at Pope TV. Go to Pope TV. You can see some exclusive videos and some funny things that your boys share, as well as stuff about my charity, the Love Alive charity. I always tell people one dollar help makes a difference. Go over, see the video that I shared recently from this past January. Fed over three, almost 400 people out of Burger King in downtown Jacksonville. We clothed them. We gave blankets to those that are on the streets, hygiene products, book bags filled with essential needs for the kids to achieve academic success, and the list goes on. Uh, you can learn more about my charity over at love-alive.org. And, of course, if you want to hear your boy run his mouth, you can do so every Saturday morning over on whatever podcast it may be, Apple, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, the list goes on and on. That is Pope's Point of View podcast with Elijah Burke. And if there's any of you out there that are in the LBGT community, I got representation for you as well because I am joined at this point in time by my co-host, Poyo Del Mar. And you guys can figure that out. Follow him wherever he's at. Or her, sure. take your pick. <laughs> and speaking of, we 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 seen we seen the pick with the Briscoes all the way for show. Pope, again, thank you so much for taking Appreciate your time out, ladies and gentlemen. As always, you are truly the twenty eight year old piece of gold. He's too cold, and he the Pope. And until next time, may we see when we see you. Peace.